In this video, I'm going to explain exactly how to set up audio for your live streams using Elgato equipment. That's the intro. That's the whole intro. Run the animation. This shot right here is actually what inspired four upcoming videos on this channel. I was in Japan last month and spent a day with my friend Connor, and while we were helping him set up his audio or fix his audio for his live stream, one of the things he said was, whenever something breaks on his stream, he goes to my channel and hopes that I have a video to help him fix it, especially with audio. And it made me realize that I've done a lot of videos on audio gear recently, but I haven't done any in-depth tutorials on how to actually use them from start to finish. So I decided that the next four streamer masterclasses are gonna be in-depth tutorials on the four of my favorite and also four most popular audio devices for streamers, namely Elgato, Beacon, Roland, and Rode. And because each of the four products has their own strength that makes them stand out, and because I don't wanna be redundant and say the same thing in all four videos, I'm gonna do a bit of a deeper dive into whatever audio element is the strength of that device. That way, these videos not only help you choose the device that's right for you, but even if you don't use any of them, they will still all be really helpful for you as a streamer. So video number one of this four is on the Elgato Wavelink system. I've got the Wave XLR and the Stream Deck Plus with the Wave, Wave XLR dock. Whew, that is a mouthful. Let's jump right in. So of course, first thing we need to do real fast is install the software. Elgato downloads. We'll need the Wavelink software. And also, if you have a Stream Deck, make sure you download the plugin too. They just, those are new. <laughs> that Quick Link, that's nice of them. That'll get you mixing controls on your Stream Deck to have right at your fingertips. So when you open up Wavelink for the first time, it's gonna look a little something like this. I have already added one channel. This is my microphone so you can hear me. So let's do that first. Let's load in your microphone. First thing, on the empty channel one, you're gonna hit the plus button and you're gonna scroll down until you find your microphone. For me, it was Elgato XLR Dock. I'm also gonna rename it the name of my microphone so it's a little easier for me to remember. We're gonna say Shotgun Mic. Clicking on this down arrow gives you your basic microphone settings. And Elgato does a good job of making it very simple. You're gonna add 48 volts of phantom power if it's a condenser mic. You're not gonna add that if it's a dynamic mic. And then they give you this little scale of how much gain to add, whether it's a condenser mic or a dynamic mic. Now don't take these words as gospel here because I'm actually using a condenser mic, but it's a shotgun mic, it needs a little bit more gain. So I'm all the way up in dynamic territory here. But typically dynamic mics require a lot more gain I'm up to 38 decibels than condenser mics do. And if you're on an SM7B, you're gonna be going up to, you'll hear me get louder here, you're gonna go up to like 55 dB, maybe up to 60. But I'm good at 38 here. Basically, you're just gonna slide this around until your loud points, like check, check, check loud, are in the yellow area. That's all you need to do. You've also got a couple more settings down here that realistically you don't need to touch unless you're doing something unique. So we're gonna leave those as is. We're gonna keep this simple. Now the thing that Wavelink does really well and really made it stand out when it first came out is that it was kind of the first streamer system that allowed for sub mixes, meaning two different mixes. So you can see here, I've got two faders on my microphone. One is what I hear and one is what my audience hears. Now, you can see I've got mine muted here. There's a reason for that. Microphones are kind of an exception to the rule here, but if I were to add another channel here, let's say I add my voice chat, and this is where my Discord call, my teammates pop in. And I wanted my teammates to be really quiet so I could hear the footsteps in the game, but I wanted this side to be loud so my audience could hear them at full volume. Well, that's that's what this is for. This is called a submix. We have multiple channels, which is my microphone and my voice chat that I can control separately. And then we have multiple mixes. We have our personal mix, which is what you're seeing on the left side of each of these, and then the audience mix. The, the separate channels are like the different inputs. The two mixes are the two different outputs. That's like three different different explanations of the same thing, but I wanna make sure you guys understand that. We'll get back to mixes and channels in a little bit. I wanna get back to the microphone because there's something else really important we're gonna do here. We're gonna polish up our voice just a little bit. Now down here, this is the button for effects, audio effects. So this is where you can add things like EQ, compression, whatever to your voice. Elgato has also recently added a really cool feature where you can record your voice and then listen to it as you're adding effects, taking them on and off and adjusting them. I'm gonna use this feature and while I'm setting up voice focus and some effects, I'm gonna tell you about today's sponsor, 
Owned.pro, your one-stop shop for all your stream widget needs. Owned.pro, your one-stop shop for all your stream widget needs. Owned.pro, your one-stop shop for all your stream widget needs. Owned.pro has been hard at work making a number of really clean, really simple widgets for your live streams to look more professional. For example, I use four of them on my stream. The combined chat overlay, the now playing music widget, and the two that I helped them design, the label rotator and the hypometer. I like it around 40% here. Let's add an EQ. The label rotator is a great clean way to show your most recent donator or subscriber or YouTube member, and you control exactly which metrics it shows. The hypometer is a really cool way to keep a train going on your stream. And again, you control which actual events trigger the train to keep going. A lot of these widgets are completely free. So check out the link in the description down below. Check out own.pro. Start adding some really cool widgets to your stream today. I think that sounds awesome. EQ is almost like the filter, like an Instagram filter, but for your voice. It's like a color grade. We'll do more on EQ and audio effects on the Beacon video next because Beacon does audio effects better than anybody else. But just know that typically a condenser mic doesn't require as much EQ as a dynamic mic where you really get some muddiness unless you fix it up in here. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of high end. I'm gonna double click there. I'm gonna right click and make it a high shelf. Just, you know, around around three, 4,000 Hertz. We'll maybe boost it up two to three decibels. I can use my scroll wheel to smoothen this out a little bit. That looks about right. And then usually I'd be listening to it while I do this, but uh, I already did this before and I know how this goes. So I'm gonna double click. I'm gonna add a little bit of a bump here at 120 Hertz, just to give it a little bit of thickness, just one and a half decibels. And then maybe we'll pull out a little bit at 500 to get rid of some of the muddiness, but not even a full decibel. Let's take a listen to it with and without this EQ now. A recording of my voice, it's just a good sample for me to listen to so I can see how it sounds. Now, I'm kind of far from the microphone, so you're probably going to hear some room voice. Let's fix that. You can hardly even hear the difference, but I think it's just a nice little bit of sheen. The high end gives a little, little bit of sparkle, a little bit of texture. The low end gives a little bit of thickness, especially since I'm so far from the mic. And I think we're gonna call that good. Now it's worth noting, you can put these kind of effects on any of the channels. If you wanna add some EQ to your gameplay to increase the footsteps, you can do that. It's pretty cool, but I think we're done with the microphone here. Let's get into some deeper mixing and add some more channels. So we've got our voice chat. I wanna add our game. I'm just gonna use system. I like using system for gameplay. That way, Chrome, gameplay, they all go into the same one. It feels like a general PC volume channel. Now let's add one more for music. But since I use Spotify, I'm just gonna call this Spotify. Now, one of the first things I like to do is let our computer know what the default channels are. So I'm gonna right click on this little speaker down here. I'm gonna go to sound settings. Scroll down to more sound settings. And this little guy up here, you can see this isn't the right one. We wanna do Elgato system as our default device and voice chat as our default communication device. And that's under the playback tab here. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna send any sound we have from our computer into our system sound, except for apps that identify themselves as communication apps, things like Skype, things like Discord. Windows knows that's a communication device. And so it's gonna send those directly into voice chat instead. So now when we open up Discord, we go into a voice call, they're gonna come through voice chat and we can raise and lower the volume like this. And then when we open a game or a YouTube video, if we wanna make millions of dollars watching other people's content, we it's gonna automatically route it through system here. We'll also go into recording. We're gonna take the microphone. In this case, we're gonna say Elgato XLR dock, perfect. And we're just gonna make sure it's both the default device and the default communication device. The fact that when I right click and neither of them show up means that is correct with a little check mark next to it. We're all good there. I do, however, want to route Spotify through its own channel so I can turn up and down the music on its own. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Spotify. I'm going to play some copyright free music like Stream Beats, link in the description down below. Let's turn on some lo-fi. You can see by default it's coming through system, but if I hit the little plus button under Spotify and check the box, hey, look at that. It's shifted over to Spotify. And I can lower the volume of the music on its own, totally separate from my game volume or my Discord volume. You'll notice one of the things I had to do was move my audience mix and my personal mix separately. So this is how much I hear of the music. This is how much my audience hears of the music. Well, there's a tiny little feature down here called Link Faders. When we do that, when you drag one, it drags them both. And every time I talk about this feature, I feel compelled to remind you that that was my idea. Elgato still hasn't paid me for it. 
Maybe one day. I gotta stop giving away my ideas for free. So this is great. And because when I'm streaming, I like to have my music volume slightly lower than my audience's volume, I'll usually give it a little bit of an offset like this, and then I'll link it. And now you can see how they move. Perfect. Now, so far this is looking great, but personally, I like to have my system come before my voice chat. For some reason, that's that's where the priorities stand in my brain. So I'm just gonna click in the middle here. And I'm gonna drag it over and it reorders for me. And now this is my mix. This is how I like it. This is great. In fact, the last thing I'm gonna do here after I lock these two as well, is I'm gonna send this to my stream deck. So now I can adjust these things on the fly. So there's this little button right here. This is also a new feature in Wavelink 2.0. Export profile to Stream Deck. If I click this, I'm gonna choose my Stream Deck Plus. That's the one on the right over here. I'm gonna hit Create Profile. And we're gonna add it to my right Stream Deck. And look, here you can see on the Stream Deck, it ordered them the way I ordered them. We've got our microphone, we've got our system, We've got our chat, you can see a little voice bubble there. It always puts the master output on the far right. And if I swipe over, we've got our last one, the music. But I'm actually gonna change a couple things here because I don't like the way these are set up by default. You can see in the second one here, my system, right now I'm controlling my personal mix with the little headphones right there. If I click it in, it'll switch to the audience mix. It's layering two different actions that you switch between by clicking the button. We're switching back and forth between the monitor mix, which is my mix, and the stream mix or the audience mix. But the thing is, I've got them linked, which you should have most of the time anyway. So if I adjust one, it adjusts them both anyway. So we're gonna change that. Remember we installed the Wavelink plugin for Stream Deck when we installed the software? Well, that makes this really easy. We're gonna drag input on here. So now it's just a single input. It's not a stack anymore. And we're gonna change this back to system the way it was. It's just not a stack anymore. And it doesn't even matter which mix I choose because they're linked. I like to have the monitor mix because it makes the most sense for me to see the volume the way I hear it. And then also if I'm gaming when I'm not streaming, the volume still makes the most sense. I also like to change the step up to plus and minus four. You can see when I'm at plus or minus one, every click of the dial changes it by 1%. Meaning if I wanna go from 100 to zero, it takes a lot of scrolling. I'm gonna change this up to four. So now every click of the dial, it goes down by 4%. And now I can go zero to 100, zero to 100 in a single turn. Let's do that with all of them real quick. Input over here, voice chat. I'm also gonna get rid of the microphone because I never actually change the volume of my microphone on stream. So let's delete that. Let's move all these over. Let's move music into this one or Spotify, move that up to four. And now we can have all three of our tracks that we wanna adjust and our master output all in there. Now, I never actually adjust this dial, this master volume. I just like to be able to see the levels going up and down so I can verify there's actually sound coming out of it. And if I switch it to be able to see both of them, you can see I've got sound going to my audience and no sound going to my headphones. Perfect, that's what I wanna see. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add an input to our button over here and we're gonna make this a mute button for our microphone. And we're gonna mute it from the stream mix. So I get a phone call from my mom. She wants to tell me how much she loves my streams, but I think it's a little bit cringy. I don't want that coming through on the stream. See, it worked. Now my mom can spend as much time as she wants telling me how great I am. My audience doesn't have to hear it. But there is one last tip that I use all the time that I'd like to share with you. We're gonna grab this device right here and we're gonna move it right above master output. And under here, we're gonna select toggle output. Now what this allows you to do is it allows you to set your two different outputs, let's say headphones and speakers. And with a click of one button, you can switch between those two outputs. So output is gonna be the monitor mix. The primary is going to be my headphones, which are actually going into my beacon mic right here. So that's my primary output. My secondary is going to be the DLZ Creator XS. And that is how my speakers are connected. And then for the title, just to make it even more obvious, we're going to say headphones, this little symbol, maybe a space though symbol, and then DLZ. So I can see the headphones are when the left ones lit up, the DLZ or the speakers are when the right ones lit up. And when I click it, it switches back and forth. And you can actually see it happening in Wavelink as I press that. Headphones, speakers. 
really cool. But I think we're gonna call that a day. That should cover about 99% of anything you guys should want to do in the Elgato ecosystem, except for maybe a deeper dive into audio effects like EQ or even compression that we didn't get to. So that'll be live on the next one. Make sure you subscribe for that. Hit the like button if you enjoy these deep dives and these tutorials. Hit the like button while you're down there. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you don't have any questions, just leave your favorite emoji for engagement because I appreciate you guys. Helps out a lot, more than you know. And as always, happy streaming.